Oh, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How awkward. No, I was just playing around with some bass because on today's show we are talking all about that bass, about that bass. No treble. You know I had to go there. Uh, welcome to Garage Band Weekly. My name is Pete Johns and on this week's show, yes, we are looking at the bass. We're going to slap at a bass. We're going to show you all the ways you can create in Garage Band using bass instruments and uh, that and a whole lot more. We've got some news and notes we're going to talk about. I'm going to have a wee rant about a few things because that's kind of how we roll around here. And uh, I hope you are doing well if you're watching live or whether you're watching on the replay. I hope all is well in your world. Uh, we didn't do the intro music today. I didn't promote this show on the on the Facebooks today. We're going a little bit different today, so uh, we'll we'll see how things go. It's uh, it's it's going to be one of those interesting ones. Uh, bass, indeed, bass uh, is a good thing, and we'll be talking about the bass here today on the show. Uh, hello to Gary Hubs. Hello to Thomas Christ. Get a gorilla. Gorilla is excited. There you go. Get a Mark Bro. <laughs> I hope you are all doing very well. Yeah, trying some new things here today. Uh, I just put out a Logic Pro video today, uh, as well as doing the Garage Band show. So I'm trying to do like you know, two things at once. And uh, yeah, we're going with what will happen if I don't promote things on social media at all. If we just sneak in and do the show, will things be different? So you are part of an experiment today. Hello, John Swanson. Hello to Tremor Bear as well. I hope everybody's having a good time. G'day, Frank Terzo as well. So <clears throat> let's dive into some news and notes. But before we do so, I did want to point you in this whaley direction, which is over here. That is my GarageBand FAQ. If you go to studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand, that is my one-stop shop. If you need information about GarageBand or even about Logic Pro, there's a link there to all my Logic Pro stuff as well. So if you missed today's Logic Pro video, you can check that one out. If you want to check out my course, it's only $10. It will always be $10. There is no such thing as scarcity in digital products despite what you might find if you talk to some other people. So you can check that one out. And all of the free GarageBand playlists full of great, well, I hope great, information that's going to help you create, record, and release your best music in GarageBand. It's all over there at studiolivetoday.com slash GarageBand. All right, let's crack into some news and notes. The first bit of news I wanted to send you away is that my brand new song is available now. You will know it if you've been around, if you were here on the last couple of weeks' shows, you'll know that what we did is we created a song. So we created the song, this one here, my single Boom Boom. Uh, it's available right now. Uh, I've released it as well. So we not only created it and recorded it, we released it. So I'm living my own mantra. We, I went create, record, release, and we created and recorded and released this song. It's available here. I'll, I'll get the Piper follow page up. So if you don't remember what it sounded like, let's put it in your head again, shall we? You put a quarter in. Your fingers on the joystick. Your face, it had a grin. I wanted space invaders. You want to jump and bro. That's when I had to go home. I'm not going to give you the hook, <laughs> but I put the link there right in the chat. So if you want to go and check out the new single, I would appreciate it. And uh, hopefully for those that watched along, you are inspired by the fact that I can, you know, in GarageBand, you can create in a genre that you've never created in before. Just throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks. And sometimes you get something that's a bit of fun. And we definitely had a lot of fun creating that one here on the channel. And I say we because, uh, yeah, you were involved. The live studio audience were definitely involved with that. Boom to the boom, boom. Exactly. G'day, Lily Billy's Ciao, comma stay. Um, yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Maddie from the Lily Billies, who also released a brand new single and has an album that I hear down the grapevine is very close to being finished and released the second Lily Billies album coming soon. G'day, Tremor Bear. G'day, Ashley HM. More news and notes. Uh, so as I mentioned before, my Logic Pro videos, we are slowly but surely building up a library of Logic Pro goodness. So if you want to find out about more about that, uh, again, you can go through via the link there and you can jump in and check out all my Logic Pro videos. There's a whole 
whole hog and playlist of Logic Pro videos. Everything from creating your first song. So I know folks like Brad Example mentioned to me the other day that he hasn't started yet. So we've got the, the first song video that I created right on day one. And then a whole bunch of information, how to import your files, because it's very different in Logic Pro. How to use the markers, multiple tempos, multiple times and key signatures. How to get the guitar tuner up. Um, how to export a song, doing tempo mapping, fading in and fading out. And all the way down to the latest one. So just released a video around saving your channel strips. So um, Thomas Christ, I have to give a shout out to uh, for that one because we were trying to work it out live on, on this week's live stream about Logic Pro. Couldn't for the life of me work it out because it's not where you think it would be. It's not in the mixer. It's not in the channel strip. You've got to go out to your main view and actually tap on the very left. And there's a little menu there that I didn't even know existed. And you can save the save your presets save your audio patch there you can also save master track patches you can also save instrument patches it is pretty darn cool <clears throat> so uh, go and check that out as thomas says there's all the all the information um i wanted to uh, say a couple of things <clears throat> first of all i got some new gear coming so you may for those observant folks and you may have noticed that i've actually changed i've gone back to this microphone for these live streams, so I'm using my AKG D5, a dynamic microphone, as opposed to my condenser. My condenser was just getting a bit crackly and a bit of noise, and I wanted to go back to using a dynamic mic because I, I find it's easier to keep a decent level. Um, you, I can just you know, talk into the microphone, and if I get loud and if I get really soft, it's it's easier to maintain that with my mixer because the the biggest problem with my current mixer, the, the Zoom Live Track L8, is there's no compressor on the vocal channels. So it means that I have to ride the faders and really carefully get my trim and my fade uh, in the right position. Otherwise, I'll either clip or I'll be too quiet. So I'm going to, uh, to consider my future options for that. But in the meantime, I wanted a broadcast dynamic microphone. I could have gone the Shure SM7B, but everyone's using the Shure SM7B. So I've actually gone the Rode Procaster. So the, I was between the Rode PodMic and the Rode Procaster. I've gone the Procaster. I've also got the uh, the Rode Arm, the uh, S1 Plus or something. <laughs> the good, the, the slightly upper class uh, Rode Arm. So instead of using the $20 eBay Arm and uh, my my dynamic vocal microphone, I'll actually have a, a setup that it will be able to move and rotate my microphone to all positions, get the cable out of the way, clip that up against the uh, the 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 um, arm and uh, hopefully it's going to help for things like this and i can only do that because of the wonderful patrons we have on the channel so a uh, shout out to the patreon crew you can become one of them it sounded like a giant ad today isn't it? i promise we'll get into some bass well look i'll, I'll prove it the bass the bass guitar is here so i promise you we'll be playing some bass we'll be slapping the bass before you know it <laughs> but uh yeah just wanted to say a thank you to the patreons of the channel uh that uh, will be able to again replace some of that gear because of the support you're giving it all goes back into the channel sometimes it does help keep uh, the lights on and sometimes it goes back into the channel through the gear that i use here because <clears throat> I, I don't really like i know I know people say, John's, you're a YouTuber, you should be reaching out to these companies and get send your free gear. That's fine, but then what if I don't like it? Uh, it gets very awkward there because I don't like the whole review this gear and make sure you say it's good, otherwise uh, you're in trouble. I'm like, no, if I buy it, I can say it's garbage, and if it's garbage, it's garbage. Or if it's great, it's great. And then maybe, yeah, then the companies might come to me. Who knows? All right, hello, Princess LDG. G'day, Tommy Jack. Hello to everyone uh, who is here. Yeah, so Jade has the pod mic, the Rode pod mic, and I'm going the Procaster. They're almost identical. I just like to be different. <laughs> and it does indeed pay for the coffee. So uh, keeps the lights on, keeps me caffeinated, and uh, keeps me uh, in gear. And again, it's the first gear I've bought uh, just before the end of the financial year. So, uh, by the way, happy 4th of July. It is 4th of July here in Australia. 4th of July tomorrow in the US. I don't know if the 4th of July is a thing that I guess a lot of people celebrate it still. Um, I don't know how problematic it is or what its actual true meanings are. But uh, if you want to celebrate it, you do you, boo. If you don't, don't. That's cool. But um, yeah, happy 4th of July celebratory. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's the end of our financial year. So the 1st of July... 
what, when you're running a business, uh, if you want to have something as an expense or a tax deduction, it has to be bought by the 30th of June. So uh, I bought myself my new Magic Keyboard, my Magic Trackpad, and uh, the, the new microphone and arm that are coming. And all of that is indeed helping me with Garage. If you're wondering, how does that work? Like, how, how, how does this relate to GarageBand? I promise it all relates to GarageBand. Slap at a bass. I'm actually terrible at slapping at playing slap bass. So I'll be playing the bass. Whether I'll be slapping it is uh, uh, a different story. Yeah, the, the old fiscal year, the financial year. And by the way, I'm very glad I'm doing this job because in my previous lives, uh, the end of the financial year and July was my least favorite months because you had to do end of month, end of quarter and end of year reporting. And you basically had to justify your existence and you had all your yearly targets that you had to hit. And when you didn't hit your targets, you had to spend hours writing reports, justifying why you didn't, what you're going to do better this year and why you should be able to retain the budget you had last year. Uh, this time around, I sat down with myself, we had a beer and we went, pretty good year, yeah? And, we, and I went, yeah, pretty good year. And that was it. That was my end of year reporting. That all being said, we will have a uh, end of month and end of year summary tomorrow for patrons. I know, I don't mean to be exclusionist, but uh, yeah, anyone is welcome to become a patron. It is uh, simply $1 per month or more, and you can become a patron too. And we'll be doing a Patreon live show this time tomorrow, a little bit later actually, but around this time tomorrow for those that are interested and are patrons, where I'll be sharing a whole bunch more information about what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, I wanted to just mention real quick, I'm getting a lot of questions lately about uh, things like plugins not working, your iCloud drive not syncing and things happening a bit weird in iOS land. And I just wanted to remind everyone, I know most of you know this, but it, it bears repeating, which is the universal fix is called so for a reason. And that is the number one thing you need to do before you freak out, before you contact developers, before you leave a zero rating on any app store about an app not being compatible is number one, Make sure you've updated to the latest version. It goes without saying, latest version of, of the app especially, but iOS or iPadOS as well, or Mac OS. And secondly, close all your apps, turn your machine off, turn it back on again, open it up and try again. It sounds really simple and it is. And the reason it's called the universal fix is it fixes a lot of things. If you've ever had that uh, can't access file, uh, your iCloud drive syncing is not working, um, plugin failed, plugin fell off, and plugin not working, uh, audio unit crashed, whatever it is, just take a deep breath, save everything, close everything, turn it off, turn it back on again. I've spoken to people and when I say this to them, I say, when was the last time you turned off your iPad or your iPhone? And they say, I, I turn it off whenever I'm not using it. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> You're probably not understanding the turning off part. Uh, t tapping the button, tapping the side button to blank the screen is not turning it off. It is still on. It is still processing. Everything's still running. Turning it completely off means holding down the button, swiping the little power off thing, letting it sit and chill for maybe a minute just to relax a bit. Hold down the button, turn it back on, and then try again. And honestly... It's just like turning your computer off and on or turning your TV off and on or any electrical components, especially electronics that have a lot of resident memory. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. The longer you leave it on, the worse it gets. When I worked in the corporate world, there were people who would complain. They would come into work and they'd complain about how slow the network was and how their, their spreadsheet wasn't opening properly. And I'd be like, bro, you didn't shut down your computer last night, did you? And they're like, why would I do that? I'm like, bro, when was the last time you shut down your computer? And they're like, stop calling me bro, that's weird. Um, but I, probably a month ago. And I'm like, there's your problem, fishbowl. Like, that's, that's how it works. So regularly shut down, regularly turn your stuff off and on, and uh, you'll be fine. You'll be good to go. Yep, it's a fix that works across the board. G'day, Doug Kidder. Hope you are doing well, my friend. Uh, a little coffee. Um, do I have anything else to rant about? C couple of things. Uh, number one, <laughs> I talked recently about my YouTube warning, and I'll be sharing a bit more of the information and my thoughts on that in tomorrow's Patreon Live. So another, if you want the goss, if you want the behind-the-scenes stuff, that's another reason to become a patron and join me for Patreon Live tomorrow. But short answer is... I build my house on rented land, which means that I've built my channel and I've built this Studio Live Today community around YouTube. And YouTube is owned by Google, who are owned by Alphabet. And I have to obey their rules and abide by their rules. And I broke one, apparently. The only, the only thing I'll say about this <laughs> is that my pet peeve uh, in the corporate world, in everything within life, 
is not having clear expectations because I think that there's only two fundamental things that you need to do to be a good leader. So when I was a leader of people in the corporate world, there were two things that I really focused on. And number one was setting clear and fair and consistent expectations. So making sure that everyone knew what they needed to do by when and specifically what the outcomes needed to be. And that way, when you set that, when people d d decide to not actually do the right thing and decide to go against that, then you can give clear feedback about what went wrong. Here's the problem is that <laughs> I, get, I got a notification from YouTube saying you have made a comment that has been removed. Okay. Uh, it was because of bullying and harassment. Okay. And if you do it again, you'll not be able to comment anymore and have your, your channel removed. I'm like, okay. So you've given me a vague bit of information about something that I did, but not telling me exactly what I did. You've then given me a thread of the action that will take place if I do, again, the thing that you haven't told me what I did. I don't really see how this works in reality. So I don't know how that helps me. Uh, it would be like me as a corporate leader saying, uh, your goal this year is to do a good job. And then someone says, okay, look here, I, I delivered $200,000 worth of revenue. And I'm like, I wanted you to deliver four hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue. Um, that's it. You're, if you don't do this again, um, then if you do that again, then you're in trouble. Okay. Now, now go away and do do you do this month's work? And they're like, "What do I need to get this month?" Oh, I'll tell you at the end of the month if you haven't got it or not. It's like, come on, man. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a bad bad boy. <laughs> Just like bad boy, I'm a bad boy. Hi, bad boy. All right. Uh, last thing I wanted to talk about is that if you are in the market for gear, as I have just bought some gear, Amazon Prime Day is just around the corner. I am doing a live stream. So that'll be uh, next week when uh, Prime Day kicks off. But I did just notice I got an email that they've started putting things on sale. So uh, do keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the gear guide, studiolivetoday.com slash gear. Uh, I will be doing a live stream just to see. And look, I'm not going to tell you what to buy. I'm not going to tell you you need to buy all the things. But the good thing about Prime Days, if you if you shop on Amazon anyway, and if you're looking for gear, and that particular gear that you've been coveting goes on sale for 20%, 30% off, grab it. So I know that last year, I think Thomas Christ, correct me if I'm wrong, you grabbed the Audio Technica AT2020, which is like a $100 mic, and I reckon you picked it up for like 60 which is a really good deal. And I know that the things like the Shaw SM57 and 58, they often go on sale for, you know, $70, $80, $90. They're usually $100, $110. So there's good deals on the sort of gear that you would want to buy. And, and especially things like um, guitar picks, guitar cables, uh, strings, uh, like Ernie Ball will often have like 30, 40% off their strings. So if you're, if you're a slinky user on your electrics like me, you might want to pick up a few packs of, uh, of Ernie Balls and just, just your general stuff that you, you'd need from your, your consumables as well as any new bits of gear. So keep an eye on that. You did, yeah. So good, good stuff. So, so uh, we, we will do that. And again, I know it gets a little bit like uh, Pete's Home Shopping Network channel, but we'll dive in there. We'll see if there's any amazing deals because, again, sometimes you come across really good ones and sometimes you don't. And that's okay. That's, that's how life goes. All righty. Uh, let's dive in because that was 18 minutes and I meant it to be about uh, three. <laughs> We got a bit passionate about things, but there's nothing wrong with a little bit of passion every now and then, right? Am I right, base? Yes. See, <laughs> the base believe the base agrees with me. The base believes me. So, what are we going to do here? Well, I would like I've I've written down a list here, and I'd like your help with this. I've written a list of all the ways that we can add bass guitar here in. GarageBand for iPad and I thought I would go through all of them and then if you have other ideas or other ways of or other things that you think that we could do then I'd like you to throw them here in the chat as you go as we go along because uh, it, it's just just something for a bit of fun so I've, I've got a, a drum beat here And I don't know if we'll use this or we need to change it up because as we go through, we may find that some of the different bass parts we find are uh, a little bit, a uh, little bit different. Uh, do do you sell a slap chop? Yeah. So I'm tired of having a boring tune. The slap chop. Oh man, do you remember the slap chop? Do you remember the um? Who was the guy? Cameraman. Follow me with this. The the magic mop swish. What was it? The chamois. The sham wow. Yeah, I'll be selling sham wows slap chops 
and uh, the Ronco, what was the Ronco one? That, well, yeah, wrong, there were heaps of Ronco ones. Uh, let's start with the first one. So Apple Loops. So this is probably the easiest way that anyone can add some bass here is to actually use your Apple Loops. So up here in the top right corner, we can tap on this loop button. We can go to Apple Loops and here's all the loops in the world. Now, Apple and GarageBand have done a good job these days of making sure that we can filter this down nicely. So we're going to filter by all sound packs. We're going to filter by, well, we'll leave, leave we'll turn off drummer loops because we definitely don't want a drummer. We want audio loops and software loops. But oh, how do we do just those? There we go. Audio loops and software loops. Uh, and then let's uh, scale. We don't really care about the scale. All right, so we've got our loops there. We now can actually search the loops. So if we search bass, and you've got to put bass in capitals because it's just how we roll, you've got all your different bass sounds here. So you've got a veritable plethora of different basses. You've got kicks, you've got sub basses, you've got all sorts of things. Now, I'll, I'll play around with this a little bit because you can start going into things like genre. So if we go to funk, we can actually get all of our funk bass. So this makes it uh, an easier way to go, but you lose your search. So as soon as you put funk there, you lose your search, and I don't think you can go, oh, there you can, you can. Okay, I, I take it all back. So you can set your genre and then type bass. See, I'm learning things. Seven years into my garage band journey, and I'm learning things. So let's find ourselves uh, a little bit of a... That's kind of cool. We'll come on down. What about the big funk slap bass? That's a candidate, because I can't slap. We'll probably go with that. We've got like some chopped funk bass here. That's pretty cool. That's in the Watch the Sound sound pack, uh, Disco Breaking Bass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch that we can go through here. Um, hang tight. Oh, the hang tight sounds cool. Hang in tight. Is that new kids? That's actually next level cool. You've actually got the sort of slappy sounds on that one. I kind of dig that one. Let's bring this one in. So to bring it in, we tap it, we drag it in, we drop it on a new track here. Uh, let's uh, let's just to change things up, let's go with that one for, say, the first four bars, because it's a two-bar loop. And then if we go back to our Apple Loops, here's a cool thing. Because you've got a couple of different types, we can... Uh, what about the three one? That's cool. That's even cooler. Let's see if this does actually work in with our drum beat so far. Yeah. How well does that sit? Right? And that's simple. Again, you need zero talent. All you need to do is be able to type in the word bass <laughs> and you can get yourself some bass, which is a, which is a cool thing. Uh, yeah, lots of, lots of great sounds in the Apple loops indeed. Uh, I know. Um, well, that's the thing. They get, a, they get some good quality. They actually get some good people to do the recording. I've, I've only had a small glimpse behind the scenes of, of what Apple do, but they've got themselves some pro musicians actually creating the Apple Loops, as, as well as the, the ones that do it in their packs. G'day, Al Davis. Thanks for joining us here. So Apple Loops, there's your first way to do it. The other way, of course, we can do is to use our virtual bass. So we're going we're gonna to layer up so many basses here. We'll, 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 there's our virtual bass already, but I'm going to delete it because I'll show you how to add it for those that haven't used it before. So down the bottom here in GarageBand, we're going to hit the plus and we're going to tap on to bass. Now, the bass by default will generally load here. <laughs> It'll load up here and it'll give you your chord, uh, your chords view. You can also go to the notes view. Let's show you how to use this in both of these views, shall we? We'll we'll mute out that original bass, and I think that um, we'll, we'll stick. We'll actually make this into C minor because that's what the uh, the the slap bass Apple loop that we brought in there was. So this way we're. So we've got the C minor there. So what we can now do is just hit the record button and play in a bit of a a bit of a groove here on the C million. C million minor. That's 
there you go. We play it in, it's now there. It's now there as a virtual instrument track that we can then edit, we can play around with, we can do what we like with. So was it a great performance? Let's take a listen. I mean, yeah, you, you've lost the expression, you've lost the cool slappiness that you get from a professional playing an Apple loop there. But the cool thing is that we can actually now change this instrument. So we can tap on the Liverpool here, and if we wanted to go with more of a P bass sound, which is my preferred bass sound, we can get something a little bit like this. Or again, even if you wanted a more of a picked bass sound for a little bit more rock and roll, we get this. So lots of ways to change up our bass sound here. What if we wanted to actually play the bass more like a bass? Well, let's show you that now. We'll just drag this one out so we can mute that. Let's grab another bass. At the end, we should play all these basses over the top of each other. That could be fun. So we'll go in here and down the bottom here, you can actually go smart bass or notes mode straight into here. So we're actually gonna go to the notes mode this time. And now, we can just play in using the frets of the bass, but you do need to know where to actually tap to, to hit this, so. All right, let's hit the record button. Look, go. Cool. So we've got our bass sound there, and if you know your frets and you know your way around a bass fretboard, you can play in your notes, no problems with that. And again, we're using the muted bass this time, just to get, let you listen to yet another kind of bass sound. The cool thing here is though, if we've already recorded this, so we'll come in here, if we say wanted a different note, so when I do this sort of second part down here, if we play this. We could actually, we can actually bring these down to a note that's not actually playable on a standard four string bass. So if we wanted to say go with something like this. So you can really easily just generate notes there because you can edit the MIDI after you've played it in. Something we can't do on a real bass as easily. So it's an easy thing to do. All right, so the other one that you might have noticed here is this scale button. So let's show you how to create a bass with the scale option, which is even easier, uh, next level easier. So we'll bring this one out again. We'll mute out that bass. We'll come in here. We'll add another bass. This time, you can either do it here or in the other section. We'll go scales mode. And, uh, oh, it's given us the upright. And by default, it's given us the major blue scale. But what if we wanted a minor blue scale? Because we can use that. Let's use the upright bass because it's all about the bass. And uh, we didn't specify that it had to be electric bass. So we'll use some synth bass. We'll use some electronic bass. And we'll do some upright bass here. So let's uh, hit record and record in using scale mode. I kind of liked the, the walking bass that we had in that second half, so I think this bit sounds kind of funky. And again, you don't have to know anything about your scales. You didn't have to do your theory when you used to learn music. You can just dial it in here and you can do your blues, your pentatonic scales, your major scales, whatever you would like to use your harmonic minors, it's all there, and it even gives you a little breakdown over here, a little theory lesson of what scale you might actually be using there. So another cool way to go. The final way is if you wanna be so lazy, you don't wanna do anything at all, that is to use the autoplay. So let's add another bass track, another one, another one. What haven't we used? Let's use one of the electronic basses. We'll go the retro bass this time. So this, we've got a... 
very cool kind of retro bass sound going on here. And what we have over to the right, we also have our autoplay. And if we turn that around, you can see these turn into a strip view and you've got four different autoplays that you can use here. And on a lot of these, you can even, if you tap with one finger or two fingers, you're going to get different sounds. Three fingers, if I can, can I do it? Yeah. Let's go, um, let's go the most complicated one, autoplay four, and let's see how this one works here. So we're going to hit the record button, and then we're just going to hit on that C minor, and it's going to give us our own autoplayed part. Do, 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 do. The cool thing about this is we can move the scale. We can move it really easily by just tapping it. How cool is that? So simple, easy, effective bass. And again, if you're like, but everyone else is going to be using autoplay. Oh, I'm going to sound just like everyone else. Well, guess what? You can tap on this one, tap again and edit. And you can actually change this up. You can change it by just grabbing all the notes and moving them all around. So if we tapped out here, Come on, where are you? There we go. Tap out there and go select all. You can move them all. And if you wanted to say, move this note to make it different, if we tap off, those ones we want down there. So now we get an even different set. So you can really customize your sounds very easily and quickly here. So if you're using the autoplay, you don't have to worry that you're going to sound exactly like everyone else. Man, we're going to turn all these on at the end and it's going to be super but interesting, I believe. All right, there's uh, also plenty of bass sounds in our virtual instruments that we can use. So uh, these all create virtual instrument sounds, but there's other ways we can do that. So if we hit the plus button here, we can go to, instead of uh, the bass, if we scroll across and we go to our keyboard sounds and we tap on more sounds here, we can actually find some cool synth bass sounds here. So we've got things like the 90s stereo synth bass which is playing. Oh, it's way down low, that's why. You can barely hear that one. Let's select a different instrument, shall we? What about the Alphabet City 808? Gotta have an eight, it's our first 808. So you got all sorts of synth bass sounds and even the, the classic 80s pluck bass. So you've got plenty of different synth bass sounds to choose from there. You've also got all of your alchemy synth sounds. So alchemy synth has a bunch of bass sounds in here as well. So if we come in here, you can grab, I'll uh, say some bite bass from the 8-bit Legends pack. I kind of like that one. Let's go with it. Let's play with some bite bass. And because it's alchemy... You can change it up. What about metal lead? Ooh, rusty. No, let's go back to the original. <laughs> but you can adjust it. You've got all of your settings and all of your controls here. If you want to learn about alchemy, plenty of videos here on the channel about, about alchemy. So let's play in, this time using the keyboard. If we hit the record button up the top here. my poorest bass performance so far <laughs> because it uh, doesn't really fit the style there. But again, in your keyboards, you've also got the ability to use these ones here. You can use your chord strips there. You can even use the, if, if you're in the chords mode, you can use autoplay again. In fact, let's, let's delete that because I reckon autoplay is going to do a lot better job. We'll delete that. Let's just try a random autoplay on this one instead. Hit record. I'm going to go two fingers. A 
apparently I selected the Cyborg Fart preset. Let's uh, try autoplay for this time. I mean, yeah, okay, it's all right. <laughs> Maybe autoplay is not. Not going to be right for this one either. Uh, but you can also come back here and uh, go to your arpeggiator, which is always an interesting one. And again, won't, we're not going to go into all the details of arpeggiator here, but we'll just delete that. But let's just um, turn it on here. And we'll go as played, 16th notes, and give it a three octave range just to make it really interesting. And we'll hit record and then just whack down a couple of notes. Record. More like it, yeah? So there you go. You've got arpeggiated bass as well. The one final thing I wanted to talk about with the keyboard's bass sounds here, your synth bass, is you can also use it for your electric basses. So if you got overwhelmed when I was using the regular bass here and playing your notes on the bass guitar, if you want to play a bass guitar but play it using the keyboard, you can. And it's actually hidden away under the other instruments. So if we hit the plus button here, we go to keyboard, we go to more sounds. Uh, what we can actually do is we go back to our main categories in the top, scroll down over here and go to your other, then you're going to actually find all of your other instruments, all your world instruments, all of your strings, all of your, your French horn, your oboes, your bassoons, and your basses. So if you wanted to get back to that uh, cool picked bass sounds we were using before, we can actually play that using a regular keyboard. And then you can do cool funky hybrid things like throwing your arpeggiator on a regular bass and playing a ridiculous 30 second note arp using a real bass guitar sound. Uh, let's see what this is going to sound like, shall we? Let's see how this is actually sounding. <laughs> so if you've ever wanted to like do a metal song where you've got just like some ridiculous octave like you're doing a tool cover or something and you just want to be a bass player that's got like 12 fingers that can actually just play these ridiculous bass parts. Yeah, you can throw the arpeggiator here on a regular instrument, or of course you can go back and use your chord strips mode, uh, which is probably going to be a little bit more realistic for you. And um, you say the autoplay on this one. So again, if we delete it, you can go back to using chords and autoplay if that is your jam, baby. Uh, so yeah, a heap of different ways to do this, uh, to do the bass adding. Uh, exactly, yeah, flee after 12 Red Bulls. That's exactly right. Spot on. All right, we've got a few more ways to go. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thought there are this many ways to add bass guitar in GarageBand? Well, there are. And before we pick up the real bass, there's another couple of ways that I'm going to show you here. One is to use your sampler. So under the keyboard instrument, we also have a sampler here. And uh, I already have monitoring on, but thank you. We'll, we'll turn it on. Now, you've got your classic... Your classic dog bark sample. But what if we want to use something else? Well, we can actually import our own samples in here. So if we tap on the top here, we can either import a loop and then grab a sample from that, or we can indeed use uh, the ones from already from the library that we have here. Uh, so we'll, we'll import one, shall we? We'll import, and instead of using our own file, let's use an Apple loop. Because what we can actually do, if we just go with funk genre, we don't even have to have it as a bass sound. We could go with something like, so if we grab the boogie right beat, let's just uh, preview it. There, yeah, that doesn't really have a whole lot in the way. We want to find a loop that's got a bit of a bass sound in it. No, we don't want guitars. We want just an overall kind of uh, kind of a beat. Driving funk guitar chord. Nah, 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 nah. What about this? 
No, we'll go back to the first one because it's really just about showing you how this works. So we'll go to the, what was the boogie one? Big, 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 boogie, 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 boogie right beat. Uh, let's just try this second one. All right, so what we can do is we can hit this button here to import this beat. And then this is the one that we're actually going to use here. Now we can play the whole thing. But we can find by using our handles here, just the part that we actually want to use for our bass sound. So it's probably not that. It's probably this sort of sound that we had down here. So is it this sound here? Maybe it's this one here. Right down at this part here, I reckon. Right, so we will uh, just use this part. And if we... It's been a while since I've used this. It's not... It's not actually clipping that part, is it? <laughs> what if we hit the loop button there? No, it's not, it's not working the way I thought it would. I thought in the past what I've done is I've just clipped the part that we want and it just plays that part. That's better. That's the hi-hat part though. We want the broop. Is it this? Yeah, let's use that. So anyway, you can select a sound from there and then we can actually record using that as our bass sound. So if we drop it down a couple of octaves. And then we can record using just that sample sound. stop so probably wasn't the right sound to show you that but if you have your own sample or you've got a part of a loop that has a really cool bass part in it and you want to just use that bass as your own sampled instrument you can go ahead and do that and you get a weird ass sound like that <laughs> yeah so uh, sampler Probably not a fantastic option for most of your bass sounds. However, what is a pretty fantastic option is the fact that we can also download. So I'm just going to jump back over here while I log into uh, Safari and uh, go to a browser. I'm going to go to a website called freesound.org. So freesound.org. I'm just going to log in over here and then I'll come on back uh, and we'll, I'll show you how we can give any sound that we like and we can find any sound and then bring it in as a loop. Uh, why is it asking me to log in? Oh man, just bear with me. Hold the line one moment. Uh, your call is important to us. Uh, I, I have an account here. Uh, but I must have not logged in for a while, and uh, apparently iCloud Keychain has forgotten my username and password. All right, I think we're good. So all I've done here is I've jumped into Safari. I've gone to freesound.org, and I've set up a free account. Now what I can do is I can search the sound for something like Funk Bass Loop and hit the Enter key there. And we can start playing with some of these. Let's just zoom in on this stuff here. So you can start playing with some of these. Now, what I like to do is over here on the right, The uh, I like to make sure that I'm using only Creative Commons licenses because that means that I can use this for anything that I want to do. Uh, I don't have to attribute it and I don't have to pay and I don't have to do anything like that. So that way, these are all able to be used for me. So what about this G minor funk bass groove? Well, if I hit the little play button, it'll preview it for me. That's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, let's just try another couple. What about the, uh, this is a synth funk bass. Yeah, it sounds a bit, bit crappy. Try this one here. Ooh, that's weird. Anyway, we'll, we'll go with this first one because it's going to be an easy one. So all we need to do is uh, tap on the actual loop there. And then the problem with this one is it doesn't tell us it's BPM. So, or does it? Ordinarily, it'll tell you. Oh, yes, it does. I'm, I'm a lying liar who lies. 94 BPM. 
So here in GarageBand, because we don't have any flex time, that's important because we need to match this to our speed of our project. So what we're going to do is download it. Just tap on the download button there. It's going to ask if you want to download it. You hit the download button. It's going to come over to here and it's going to pop that directly into my downloads folder. What I can now do is go back to my GarageBand, go into the top right here and go to my files. Now what I want to do is browse to import it. I'm going to go down here to my downloads and tap on that one. And what we should have is this funk bass groove. We're going to import it and it's going to just pop straight in here. Now, if we want to preview it, we can tap on it. But before we bring it in, what I want to do is change my project. So it's 110 at the moment. For this to work, we actually need to bring this on down to 94. Now, don't forget when you're changing your tempo here, if you tap and hold, you can swipe down and swipe up to quickly move to find your place. So if you're going to go from like 120 to 80, don't tap it 40 times. You got to, uh, you can just grab it, pull up, pull down, and you're good to go. All right, so now that we've done all of that, what we can do is go back to our loops here, grab this loop, and throw it onto our project. And what it should do is line up perfectly with exactly the first four bars. And then what we can do is actually loop it out, tap it, loop it, and now it'll sit nicely in with our original drum beat. Now the advantage of using say Logic Pro for iPad is if we wanted to then increase the speed, because here's the problem in GarageBand with external loops, it'll work. See, if, if we brought back in our original loop, it'll work fine because this is an Apple loop and Apple loops will automatically adjust to the speed of your project. So when we go back, to 110 BPM, go to our tempo. Oop. There's still a little problem here. I don't know if you've noticed this. Sometimes if you're using an external mouse, it don't, won't tap for you. We'll go 110. Hello, Kim, Harden, Hudson. Uh, it'll adjust that. But what it's done down here, can you see how our Apple loop, this our non-Apple loop, the imported loop, has actually changed? So here, where it goes, where it's actually splitting, is now later and if we play this together it's going to sound like a veritable dog's breakfast no good because it's not matching up the tempos whereas our uh, apple loop will have matched perfectly back to the original tempo easy as. So bring it in your own downloads and you can download stuff from anywhere. You can sample a real song if you want. You can grab the start of Higher Ground from Stevie Wonder and put that, or the, the, the Chili Peppers and bring that in as your loop. Whatever you want to do, you can do that, but you can just simply download it and then bring it on in. All right, we've saved the best for last, which is a real bass guitar. So yes, GarageBand can, of course, record real instruments. All you need is an instrument interface or an audio interface to plug your guitar, or in this case, your bass guitar, directly into your iPad. So I recommend the Steinberg UR22. It's what I use here. The iRigs are great as well. So IK Multimedia iRig, you can get the iRig HD. Highly recommend the HD series or the Pro series, the regular ones that use the headphone jack or that you have to use a headphone jack to USB-C or headphone jack to lightning adapter. They're okay. They're fine. They're fine. But you're going to get a lot of feedback and you're probably going to very quickly want better quality. So I'd highly recommend getting something like the iRig or a, a something like a Steinberg or a Focusrite audio interface. And yes, all my recommendations, as the wonderful Thomas Christ has said over at The Gear Guide. Let's hit the plus button, shall we? And uh, grab ourselves this time. What we're going to do is scroll over to our guitar amplifiers this one here and you can see we've got clean distorted bass as presets here if we tap on the bass it'll bring us into our, our classic stack bass now the first thing we need to do is actually set our input so over here on the right the little input jack there my bass is plugged into input number two of the interface and we want to turn monitoring on and now We have our 
bass ready to rock and roll. So the standard bass sound here is our classic stack. To change that amp sim, we want to go with something a little bit different, don't we? Why don't we go with, uh, we want something funky. Is there something that's going to work for some funk? Uh, we probably want more of a processed sound for this. What about a filter funk? It's got the word funk in it. How can we go wrong? So this has got a, some auto funk uh, plugins here, some auto funk pedals, a phase tripper pedal as well, and uh, it is all set up for us. If we that could work well. So we'll we're, we're all set up here. We're ready to go. I'm just going to turn the bass up just so that we can. And uh, now we can actually play along with our original bass, original drum sound uh, with our bass. Now, I've realized there a couple of problems. We have one of our other basses still playing. <laughs> but luckily, I was kind of playing a groove that was kind of along with it. And I also, I've got my gain set on my uh, audio interface for my guitar, but it's actually a little quiet here. So you can see there that my bass is recorded a little bit on the quiet side. Let's just come out to our track view and take a little squiz at this. So we'll play it back. <laughs> So not bad, but I reckon we can actually turn this up and do it again. Now, if I want to use exactly this setup, we can just tap it and go duplicate and get ourselves a brand new track with that same setup, but we'll just change the monitor so that I'm monitoring monitoring this track instead. And this time, let's just... Uh, So I've turned it up a little bit on the input gain, just down a little bit so I'm not getting clipping, but I'm getting a nice tone there. All right, uh, let's hit, hello Clinch, a real bass, that's what Willis was talking about, love it. Uh, let's hit the uh, record button and record in uh, this sound. Two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bit adventurous there towards the end. But you can see there that the, the, the size I'm getting through there is going to work a little bit better. And yeah, look, as Mark says, if you're going to go on one side or the other, you're better off being a little bit slow, the, a little bit low, than you are being too high and clipping. Because I reckon, like, maybe this little spot here, that might be close to clipping. <laughs> And again, the cool thing about this is we can then go ahead and if we don't like that, we can just change it up. Let's go with the hazy modulations. What's this going to sound like? Right? Without disappearing delays. <laughs> 80s sound. Very cool. So that is probably the most customizable way. But again, uh, yeah, you, you need to know, you need to have a few things. You need to have a bass guitar. You need to have an audio interface or a guitar interface for your iPad or your iPhone. And you need to know how to play. <laughs> or some equivalent there of knowing how to play. Being able to play octaves <laughs> like I can on a bass that sounds reasonable. There is one final way. Let's just turn the monitoring off so we don't hear that buzzing in the background. There is one final way, and that is to use a plugin. So yeah, we could use guitar plugins here. So we'll uh, mute out that bass. We'll hit the plus button for one final time. And uh, instead of using our amp sim this time, what we can do is just go in here, go to our audio recorder, go more, go fun, and go clean. Now what we can do is make sure that we set this to channel two, 
which is our bass. Turn the monitoring oh, on, getting all choked up. And we can play along there. But what we can do is if we come in here to our plugins and EQ, we can actually add an AUV3 plugin here. Now, the cheapest, freest, and coolest one, in my humble opinion, is Tonebridge, which is a free AUV3 guitar and bass amp simulator. So if we hit one of the plus buttons here, we come over to audio unit extensions. And in fact, we won't scroll down and find it. Let's... um. Oh no, don't, I'm so used to I'm so used to Logic Pro now where you can just search. GarageBand just needs a search box there for people that have too many plugins. But if we scroll down, we should be able to find it. I think it's just under T for Tonebridge. Too many plugins, John's Tonebridge. There it is. So Tonebridge, we tap on this little icon here, and now we can dial in whatever tone we want. And the cool thing is, you get a big search box here. You can already hear it coming through there. So if I want if I want that real flea sound, I can type Red Hot Chili Willies. Now, it's one L, isn't it? Chili Peppers. And uh, let's see if they've even got the higher ground. Surely they've got the higher ground bass tone. Uh, so there's the main riff, the intro bass higher ground. So now... We might just need to turn the effect up a little bit on that one. So we can use that as our tone. What's a what's another classic bass tone that anyone's got? Let's just turn the monitoring off for a sec because that's going to annoy us. Uh, any classic bass tones that anyone can think of? I'll try and uh, try and think of one myself uh, that's going to sound good for some funky. What about if we just go some Stevie Wonder, same sort of jam and um, superstitious? But let's go the superstition bass sound. Uh, let's turn this back on. <laughs> And again, this is just going to give us a very cool and different kind of sound for each thing. Let's just grab a pick for this one and we'll do a, a slightly different sort of bass tone for this uh, Stevie Wonder style tone. And how cool does it look that it gives you the album cover there on the, um, on the thing? I like it. I think it's cool. So not bad. I mean, to be honest, sometimes you find a tone here that works perfectly with Tone Bridge. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I kind of dig the, the standard tones that we have in GarageBand here sometimes even more, especially for bass. You tend to be able to dial these in pretty much as you would like them there. But you've got the options there to go with something a little bit different. Excuse me. My apologies. I won't want to cough in your ear. So... Let's just review and revise all the ways that we have to add bass here in GarageBand. You can use Apple Loops. You can use the virtual bass. You can use the virtual bass with a keyboard. You can use a synth bass. You can use your sampler. You can download your bass. So you can download loops and throw them straight in here. You can grab a real bass and use the built-in GarageBand amp simulators. Or you can use an external plugin like Tonebridge to create your bass sounds. I know what you want to do to finish off here. You want us to unmute each and every bass sound because you are dying to hear what it would sound like if I played all of these different bass sounds all at once. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so uh, I don't recommend this. Folks, don't try this at home. This could, uh, could end badly, but we're going to give it a go. I'm going to turn down the output on my, um, on my uh, mixer here and just bring it in slowly for you so that we don't blow anything up. Uh, let's hit play and see what happens. Oh, dear. Oh, it's recording. No, we don't want to record. Go back. Let's just hit the play button. Oh. Oh, Jesus. I'm sure that's somebody's jam. <laughs> you know what would you know what that would be cool for though? Is like 
just creating something like that as like a noise, so, so putting that as a noise, almost like a, a indistinguishable noise behind like a horror movie scene or something. Because if you just had like this sort of sound. And then, you, or it could be like, yeah, you, you're walking up to the party and that's sort of the bass sound that you're hearing. I don't know. I, I don't know. I've got this horror movie thing in my head. And you can see there that um, this is a, another reason why Logic Pro has a good uh, a good option, which is the lack of auto-normalization. Because you can see that when we play this, I'll just turn the volume down. But look how peaky that is, brah. Like, and you could even hear, you could hear the auto-limiting trying to hit in there. Yeah, it kind of does sound like an empty club, doesn't it? Yeah, with all that reverberation and all those different sounds going on, it would be usable in some sort of way. And if you were, if you made it swimming in reverb, like if you were, if you exported this and then like threw it back in and just put a whole bunch of processing on there and like make give it stereo panning and a filter on there, it would just sound like pretty cool as a noise, I reckon. Anyway, that wasn't the point of the. <laughs> The demonstration wasn't to show you how to use all of them at once. It was to show you how to use one. I think if I had to choose one for this, I would probably go with this one here, the, the one we did with our own bass using this filter funk um, on the, the bass amp because I think this one kind of sounds a little bit cool. <laughs> There you go. So I hope you found this uh, useful slash interesting, entertaining, inspiring. If it gets your juices flowing and gets you out there creating music, then uh, my job here is done. And I think it also proves that as much as we talk about things like Logic Pro or Aurea or Cubasis or uh, using GarageBand or Logic on a Mac, good old GarageBand iOS still has a whole bunch of power under the hood in a lot of different ways to create very unique and different sounds. So hopefully you got the jam of that here today. I didn't see any questions through the show, so uh, if you do have final questions, uh, I'll hang around for about three minutes here while we finish off the show. And um, uh, yes, uh, I agree. Tonebridge is uh, is fantastic. Came for this. I felt. Uh, did you know that um, a lot of the the sort of a lot of the percussion in the Seinfeld theme was actually done by a dude, just like basically going making pops and click sounds with his own mouth. Weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> Playing the bass tracks all at once is like the Mythbusters blowing up something at the end after it wouldn't blow up, according to the myth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. If we can't break it, let's just break it with uh, with all the bass. Yeah, and, and look, uh, real bass with a win, yeah, there's really nothing quite like the sound of a real bass because you can get all of the feeling. Like, it, it's a lot easier to just play the bass along and uh, do that. I like big bass and I cannot lie because it's all about the bass, about the bass. I've already had to keep one bass player on the straight and narrow. Wouldn't deal with that. Sorry, Hubsy. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, by the way, <laughs> what was that? That was nine options for adding bass. Tenth option, hubs. Just get hubs to do it. I hear that that works well as well. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, so don't forget, uh, once again, if you would like to find out all the information of everything going on around here, studiolivetoday.com slash garageband. I've just cleaned it all up for you. I've, I've tidied up. You can see it's a new and improved and streamlined Studio Live Today. So you can jump over there to studiolivetoday.com slash garageband. Check out the GarageBand iOS FAQ. All the information is there, including... The Logic Pro information, funnily enough, as well. So go and do that. If you are a patron, then uh, do check your emails because tomorrow will be Patreon Live where you get to see me let my hair down <laughs> and have a rant about all things related to music and YouTube and production and all the rest of it. You get the behind-the-scenes look at everything going on there. Uh, so if you are not already a patron, a uh, simple way to join us and to become one. One of us, one of us, studiolivetoday.com slash Patreon will take you on over there. But that's the end of the official live shows for this weekend uh, because we go we go longer. We start on Friday, Thursday, Friday, and we go all the way through to like Monday, Tuesday. That's our weekend around here. Uh, as I said, if you're celebrating various things, feel free to, uh, to go ahead and, um, yeah, celebrate them in the way that you would like to. 
because you do you. If you're doing your own thing and you, if you, if you go to fireworks or you're setting off crackers or whatever, just don't blow your hand off because you'll need that for music. That's the only reason not to. <laughs> <laughs> you need it to play, you need it to create music. Uh, so yeah, have have yourself a good old time. We'll be back again, of course, next weekend with uh, the podcast, with your music live, with the happy hour, and with Garage Band Weekly. And we'll be hopefully finishing off my song in Logic Pro for iPad as well. My first completed song is not far away. So as we say at the end of each and every show here on the old studio live today, please be kind to yourself, be kind to others, keep creating in GarageBand and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. You know what we should do? Let's go out. We didn't have it at the start. Let's go out with the GarageBand weekly intro, shall we? Let's make it an outro. I'll see you next time. GarageBand, GarageBand Weekly, GarageBand, GarageBand Weekly, GarageBand, GarageBand Weekly. GarageBand weekly. Need an answer to your question. John, do you have a suggestion? Who's about to have all knowledge? I think he might have gone to Garage Bank College. But he doesn't know, we we'll try and find out. So join the chat and give him a shout. John's.